you probably uh, introduce our, our first guest. Yeah. Well, here we have, we have Paul, Paul Waper, and uh, okay. I guess, Paul, tell us a little bit about yourself. What's your involvement in the open source community? So, uh, I'm, my first LCA was 2005 um, in Canberra, and um, that was uh, really that moment. I'd been going along to the club uh, for a couple of months before that, and I'd seen the periphery of the organisation for it, and that was that moment where you realise all these people you know, know the same problems, get the same jokes, really, you know, are, are enthusiastic. Uh, and I, I always remember Tridge's keynote from that particularly. Um, and for my, uh, to my shame, I, I looked at the program and saw even Moglin on the program and I thought, oh, it's probably just a lawyer. <laughs> I, I, probably not very interesting. I won't turn up to that. You so, didn't go to... No, stupidly. Wow. <laughs> well, the thing is that at that stage, you know, A, first LCA, and B, I live in Canberra. So for me, it was just, oh, when do I want to get up and drive down? No yep. problem. Yep. Um, 2006, I was staying in the um, university accommodation, um, and that's I mean, it's still one of my favourite LCAs. It's an experience, um, isn't it? I think when you're actually at the conference you're staying there, totally you're embedded. part of the, the actual the hub, the buzz of what's going on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You go out to dinner with these people, you wake up and have breakfast with them, you know, it, you know, it's non-stop uh, technical engagement, and it's that's the kind of thing that most of us just really, really love to, you know, be, know that we're part of these, this group of fantastic people. And it's interesting, isn't it, because, you know, at many different technical events, you know, we see these peaks and troughs, but at LCA it's just peak, you know, mm. there certainly is some waving like that, but the... the at, you know, like you don't know whether to go see you know Evan or not, yeah, but yeah. you know the fact is is that it was great, and and the problem is is there's no downtime, is there? Because there's just this great group of people. You, 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 know. you just got to go in with a you know a two four packs of V and just drink <laughs> them uh, through the throughout the week until you can't do anymore. It's only a week, right? Yeah. You can always <laughs> sleep next week. It shouldn't be recover. any longer, I think, because uh, <laughs> the drain that you'd see. I mean, it's it's hard sometimes I find to to pull yourself away from the conference long enough to to go to sleep to have dinner. Um, to have a shower and then be back again yeah. for the next morning because yeah. it's, it is full on. And you're right, the community of people are, are the technical people that you probably corresponded with online, um, project leads, um, really interesting group of people. And quite often when it's making schedule decisions, it's, it's stuff you wouldn't expect that comes out of left field. But by talking to people like Michael here um, and by looking at what the papers committee has chosen and how hmm. the organisers have scheduled things, that you might discover something completely new. Yes, um, I, I had that very experience in, in 2006. Um, you know, I looked at the program and there's this you know, talk entitled A Modest Proposal for Improving Networking Performance. Recognise the name, Van Jacobson. Ah. I know that name. Yep. Go along. And that, that was the standout talk. Yes. Yeah. Um, yes. It, it, very, a very close second was Damien Conway's talk on the you know, Pearl Six Technical and Social Development. Mm -hmm. but that was one of those talks where you just had to be there to mm. see someone say, you know, we actually can blow networking out of the water on, on a standard piece of hardware. Um, yeah. And that's, you know, it must be, I, I, I know, I would love to be involved in the, the papers process to see that, pro, that the, the selection going on, but it's something that's, I'll you tell do you a what, great service. It, I'll yeah. tell you what, it is a really hard thing because yeah. there's just so many great talks. Yeah. And it's a case of what can we bring this year? What is new and fresh? And, and what can we, you know, how can we make this conference different? How can, yeah. how can we, you know, like there's so many different things to optimise, but certainly when it comes to those talks, you know, we want to uh, get new talent in uh, and we want to uh, get in uh, people who are doing really interesting things right across the community. Mm. And I, I've done two years with you and, uh, helping on the papers committee. And we thank you for that, James. Oh, not at all. It's my pleasure to be involved again after after 03, um, which is what, 11 years ago here. Yeah. But it, there are such a, a broad range. I mean, we had something like 240, 250 submissions this yeah. year for 70 slots. Um, I think last year was around 300. Yep. Um, so you're looking at hundreds of people putting in submissions. Yep. Mm. Um, and sometimes it's the new stuff which maybe people aren't aware of yet. So there's a bit of work to go and, and actually work out, is this a real thing? Is this something that is actually up and coming? Is it somebody new in our community yes. who is coming to the fore? Yes. Um, and it's it's a really important function. I mean, there's about what, 20 people on the papers committee? Yeah, something like that, yeah. Um, so it's a reasonably large team, and, mm. and it's a global team as well. It's not just people right. in the host city or in Australia. Right, um, I think we've got um, I think we've got three countries represented at mm. the moment. 
Uh, and uh, again, that's just a, a real uh, wonderful thing that we can have is we can get involvement from uh, you know subject matter experts uh, all around the world uh, to help make this conference just you know something that's fantastic for our delegates. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. So tell us more a little bit about Clug. Um, so Clug <coughs> has kind of been going from strength to strength. We have good talks. Sometimes we're still waiting for the you know, people to suggest a talk that they want to do. Um, and I think and it's the, the curious fact uh, about the process of, of getting people to talk is that you know, my, I suppose my approach is I want to I, I provide a really friendly local platform for people to practice presentation. Absolutely. Because the really good presentations are not only the ones where they're doing really technically good stuff, but also that they're presenting it well. Mm. Um, it takes practice, I think. I mean, <coughs> especially from, from a technical background, quite often we're not used to standing up on a stage in front of a group of people. And, and I think Clug, and, and from my experience here at Clug, uh, and, and all of them in the two groups, it's a great place to practice giving technical presentations mm. and trying to keep the audience's attention. And also looking at how other people do it. Those that have gone up and, and, and previously done this through the local news user groups stepped into something like LCA, and then maybe even bigger events beyond right. this. Right. Um, it's, a, it's a really good experience. I think mm. it's a great platform for us to provide to, to yeah. the community. And we are, we're lucky in, in Clug in that you know, we've got Andrew Tridgell, there's a number of other people in the um, IBM Linux Technology Center. Um, you know, I know other people that are doing good work. Tridge is incredibly giving in his time, and he's such a good presenter. He's such a, a, a personable person. He really, uh, you can really enjoy mm. what he's talking about because he's enthusiastic about it as well. Um, but I don't want to, you know, <laughs> a, a talk from Clud, sorry, from Tridge every month would get boring, would drain him as well. So, you know, yeah, um, yeah. Plus, you <coughs> need to share him around with the rest of the country. True, true. <laughs> that a, a difficult thing to ask. <laughs> Um, but it is good. It's a, it's a piece of LCA mm. that people can have on a monthly basis. Yeah. You know, because LCA is only once a year. Uh, yeah. It's a shame, but I think we'd kill people if we had it more often. Well, um, uh, <laughs> given yeah. the amount of time it takes to, to set up an LCA, I mean, there's, yes. a, there's a lot of volunteer effort that's gone into that's right. each and every one of these. I mean, this yeah. is a volunteer grassroots organisation. and I think taking it to, to the Linux user group each month as a single stream for a single session, yes. um, yes. it's a great good point, peace reminder of it. I mean, it's, it's, uh, the kind, it's the kind of thing we really want to promote, though, isn't it? We want to get the Linux user groups uh, to be firing on all cylinders. Absolutely. And, but not just them. You know, we want to look at um, you know some Python user groups. Uh, you know, Perlmungers. Mm. Uh, you know, OpenStack meetups. Uh, all these different technical groups around the country. Uh, as a piece of LCA, really, is the same sort of spirit and culture. Absolutely. Uh, that, that people can be involved in uh, around the year. Absolutely. And uh, really, really hone those technical skills, those mm. presenting skills. And then we can come here to a like, this big event uh, once a year and uh, we can really showcase what we're doing here in Australia and in the region. Absolutely. The other factor there as well is if you go to another, uh, other conferences around, non-open source conferences, you know, um, you know, I think I went to one Microsoft thing way back in the day when I was still using that, and it was... I mean, on the one hand, it was incredibly polished, but it's the, the value for money is so low from mm. a technical perspective. Right. You, it is really all about the marketing. And it's yep. really all about the vendors coming along and saying, here's this latest, latest piece of awesome. Don't ask questionable details because it's all not released yep. yet and you'll have yep. to sign this NDA. Here, you get the very people that are making the, the programs um, standing up and saying, I mean, we have... I went to a talk by Dave Rowe yesterday on how modems work and mm. just demonstrating the maths and the signal processing right. behind the right. basic idea. Right. <coughs> this Dave is one of the, the experts in Australia on that kind of stuff. Oh, to in, have well, in the world. I mean, really, yeah. the work that he's doing there on these, um, this audio compression yeah. is, yeah. is world beating. Yeah. It's yeah. Um, amazing. And, and it's, it's, it's great to see that he's getting funded uh, by some overseas uh, people with, with uh, deep pockets who mm. are prepared to fund mm. that work uh, and, yeah. and improve things in that space. But, um, you know, we have we have these kind of world experts, don't we? And, yeah. Um, yeah. and it's great that you can interact with them. Like, yeah. you know, uh, David is a wonderful guy because he is, you know, a number of times I've sat down with him and talked to him and, you know, I don't have that, um, you know, uh, Fourier transform uh, maths <laughs> background yeah, that yeah. he has, but he's able to bring it down to a level that I can understand and uh, help me to come up to speed in a particular area like that. And yeah. he's just a perfect example of someone who's just so approachable in our yeah. community. Yeah, and that 
actually makes me think of the other really fantastic thing you get out of this conference, which is making making the friends that you have. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, because again, uh, uh, thinking of 2005, uh, I went to Eric de Castro Lopo's talk on um, the work on um, lib sample rate that he was doing. Okay. Um, <coughs> And I asked him, I asked him a question about um, you know, technical details, and he gave me a fairly terse answer, and I was a bit put off by that. But later, I got to meet him at another LCA, and we talked about it, and I realised that, you know, firstly, my technical idea had been wrong there, but more importantly, he was a really approachable guy, and we actually had we have a lot of really personable people yes. in this community. Uh, it, it really breaks that sort of geeky, stay-alone stere- stereotype. Yes. You know, there's a lot of people that here that you can you sit down at a, at a breakfast table and talk to, and they <laughs> do it. You know, find out what they're doing. It's all interesting stuff. So, yeah. And, and so, I mean, you know, just to extend that idea of fraction, you know, that's one of the things I do love is that uh, it's not just the speakers. You know, and you know, mm. you mentioned a couple of mm. guys who are really approachable. But at breakfast time, you sit down with these people. Uh, just with other delegates. You Absolutely. say, what are you working on? And then you find out these people are making these huge contributions and it's like they're very quiet, out of the way, doing their own thing. Yeah. And they're yeah. coming here for refreshment. They're coming here to learn. But you can get so much from, from one another. It's, it's fantastic. Mm. Absolutely. Absolutely. Paul, just one more thing I wanted to ask you. Sure. Um, obviously, LCA was in Canberra last year. Yep. Um, and I wanted to know what you thought of having LCA come to your city, um, what it's done in the last year to, to uh, plug, how has it changed things, and, and what's it been like? Ironically, I think the... From the club perspective, it's actually uh, drained it a bit because the, after uh, after any LCA, the, the team uh, people exhausted. often talk about the burnout that people have yes. afterwards. Um, I think I think personally, the uh, the 2013 managed it. The team managed it really well. Yeah. They didn't <coughs> they didn't have the same level of burnout that I've I've seen with other people where they just disappear for months. Mm. Um, but um, I, you know, I also really loved having LCA in my city. Um, and you know, my, my personal favourite moment from that was um, uh, Simon Hackett turning up with Robert Llewellyn, who I've been right. following on right. Google Plus for years. And he's a really interesting guy. Um, and find out not only that, but he's coming to dinner and you get to talk to him. And he is exactly as personable as a ni- nicer guy uh, to meet in real life. I've got to say, I mean, I was on the on the video team that year, uh, in, in, was it January last year. Yeah. Robert Llewellyn just came over and, and decided to come and chat to all of the team that was actually working, the volunteers that were working there. Yeah. Um, which was awesome. Though. Yeah. 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 It was such a nice thing. Right. Fantastic. And Fantastic. so I got, um, I'm building an electric motorbike. So I got the um, fuel tank, which is now the uh, cover for the controller and took it over, got him to sign it. <laughs> fantastic, um, fantastic. I then had to do a bunch of work to keep the signature but remove other things and that sort of stuff, but it's still, still there. there. So, oh, yeah. awesome. I, that was a really, really cool moment. Cool. Well, look, we're going to have to uh, wrap up. Um, well, thank you ever so much for your time this morning. Oh, pleasure. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, good to see you around. Um, we will just do a few seconds on the rest of today's schedule. Um, so, obviously, it's uh, day two of the mini comp. So, today yeah. we have an OpenStack mini comp. Yeah, open exciting. programming, yeah. Um, astronomy, Hackensen, Hackensen. Yeah. Um, uh, multimedia and music mini conference, Arduino, and we have a kernel summit going on, I believe, or a kernel unmini conference. So, same build. so you know what the amazing thing is there? That's seven different mini comps today. Seven. This is this is terrible. <laughs> The choices, it's just too much. There is, there is too much to go to today. And I think that's one of the reasons why um, LCA does choose to try and videotape as much as possible. So that right. um, people who are here, they'll go and see one stream knowing they can catch up on most of what they are. Now, I don't think we're going to be able to record all seven today. No. Um, uh, but unfortunately, these are the limits we get when we get a large number of interesting intelligent people. Yeah, we can only see a, a good number of them. A good number. A which would be number. fantastic. Now, in about 20 minutes, just less than that, I think we've got our keynote, which is Kate Chapman. Be very exciting. What do you What do you know about Kate? Uh, so this is um, trying to uh, make sure I remember now. This is uh, OpenStreetMap, right? Yes, it is. Yeah. So this is for the, humanitarian purposes. For humanitarian purposes, you know, again, a very important thing that we can do in the open source community 
is uh, you know this big slotting. You know, we did things with mesh radio as well in humanitarian causes, and it's really great to see how we can adapt technology mm. to really support countries that are, or situations that are either in crisis or uh, developing nations. I think it's a really great contribution that we can make, and uh, I think it's a great, going to be a great reminder for us today, just uh, the kind of importance that. Uh, that these sort of projects give, and also the sort of uh, impact that we can provide to that. Yeah. You know, we can just be, we, by our contributions, we can make a difference in the world. Not just, you know, in technology for technology's sake, but to actually help people in their lives, in their day-to-day -day lives. And this kind of stuff is just, you know, gold when it comes to that. Absolutely awesome. We had one keynote yesterday, which was um, uh, Suleth Dreyfus. Yes. Um, who was the author of the book Underground. Yes. Uh, I don't think she said heated out, she had to, to move off, okay. but it was a, a really interesting talk. It was. A lot of questions at the end. It was. It was. Um, you know, it makes you think, doesn't it? Uh, the kind of things we're talking about privacy in our society, and that's something that uh, I guess we, uh, as a community, are, are, we're pretty focused on that stuff anyway. Mm. But it was great to have that kind of reminder, and just uh, she had some really good practical points on one of her about third last slide, saying the things that we can do to be involved, uh, to try to make improvements in this area, to try to raise the awareness of these issues, and try to contribute ourselves in ways that can positively influence uh, privacy discussions in our community. Absolutely. So, uh, and uh, uh, the, the video from that, I believe, should be available in the next day or so. Um, I think it's already up. It's already up? The, uh, the, the keynote yesterday is already online. Uh, I've got to say kudos to the team that have been doing that. It's fantastic. That's Jason it? and Leon and the guys. Uh, yes. uh, it's been absolutely awesome to see. Yeah. Um, in fact, all of the volunteers have put in so much effort just to get everything up. Yeah. Um, obviously, we're a little late in getting this together because this was our lowest priority, but we're really pleased to be getting yeah. our first piece out. Absolutely. We'll be back in the, the next break. I think we might come and try and do a little piece. Sounds good. Um, other than that, thank you everybody for watching and uh, enjoy your LCA. Thank you. Thank you, guys. Video off, audio off. Yay! Nice. Thank you very well much. Cool, thank you. Great stuff. Good stuff.